I emulated every Switch exclusive that was released in 2022 to see how good the performance can get. So if you see everyone talking about how great Switch emulation is on the Steam Deck, and you're wondering how you can get the best results, or you're trying to emulate the very latest games, and having questionable performance, then this video is going to help you tremendously because I'm going to tell you how to squeeze the most out of your Steam Deck when it comes to emulation, and which games work well and which games don't, so you're not wasting your time. Now here's the thing, this is a Switch emulation video, and like I said, it's all about the latest games, and this means Nintendo may try to take this video down. If they do try to take it down, I will re-upload with blurred visuals or something like that because I thought you all deserve to see Switch emulation in all of its glory. Nonetheless, because of this, I decided to seek some support from a sponsor, and nobody would touch this video with a 10-foot pole. Nobody would be crazy enough to do it, except Dbrand. Shout out to Dbrand for sponsoring this video, but also for going the extra mile to make sure my Steam Deck not only played the part of the Switch, but looked the part too. This is a one-off Switch themed Steam Deck skin that is launching right now and you can buy it at dbrand.com slash switch the deck. I wish I could explain to you how excited I am that dbrand agreed to make this one-off skin based on my video idea. The look of this Switch themed skin is incredibly clean and it even has a funny blurred out logo on the back. I love the entire look of it and I paired it with this history of a handheld startup video so that my Steam Deck really plays the part of a Switch in this video. So once again, shout out to dbrand and don't forget you can get one of these for yourself using my link in the description or just go to dbrand.com slash switch the deck. Alright, so let's talk about Nintendo Switch emulation on the Steam Deck. I wanted to get the best results for you, but I am not the best when it comes to optimizing stuff like this. So I used all that dbrand money to recruit the best, literally every dollar. This is Kyle and he runs an awesome Steam Deck channel, Cryobyte33, and the best way for me to pitch it is it's like Digital Foundry for the Steam Deck, so you can see how that's going to be really helpful for this video. Among many other things, he's outlined exactly what I need to get the best performance for each of these games, and so I followed his instructions to the T, and to no one's surprise, they work like a charm and they're pretty easy too. First, let me set the stakes. What's good deck gang? I'm making a late edit to this video. The original idea was to emulate every Switch exclusive from 2022, and that's what I'm about to describe in this next portion of the video, but I am making one late addition to this video. Fire Emblem Engage came out last week, and I got it to run pretty well on the Steam Deck, but it took a little work, so I talk about that near the end of this video. That was all, I just wanted to let you know. Okay, back to the video. By my count, there were 11 major Nintendo Switch exclusives released in 2022. Bayonetta 3, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Splatoon 3, Mario Strikers Battle League, Nintendo Switch Sports, Kirby's Dream Buffet, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and Dragon Quest Treasures. I'll tell you right now that out of these 11 games, Kyle was able to get 8 of them to run close enough to native to be quite playable, but 3 of them were not playable. With that, let me tell you about our testing conditions and therefore Kyle suggested default settings. We both were using 512GB Steam Decks, I have a Q1 and Kyle has a Q3. We both use SteamOS 3.4.4 and Kyle tested an early access build of Yuzu version 3.2.7.3. I'll tell you how to install that shortly. On some occasions he also tested Ryu Jinx 1.1.503 but more on that later. Then we come to the default settings. We're going to be talking about three tools, Emudeck, Cryo Utilities, and Power Tools. In the BIOS, we also set VRAM to 4GB, then using Cryo Utilities, we set a 16GB swap file with a swappiness of 1. In Power Tools, we disabled SMT, and in the deck overlay, we pinned the GPU to 1000MHz. For Yuzu, we used Emidex selected settings and stuck to handheld mode for a battery life of about 2 hours and 7 minutes. You don't need to do all of these, you can probably get away with not making the BIOS changes or the Cryo Utilities changes, but you absolutely will need to disable SMT for the best performance, as well as pinning the GPU to 1000 megahertz for most games. Okay, so how do you do all of this? This is all going to sound a little more complicated than it actually is. I was able to run through all of these steps in less than 30 minutes, and that now gives me a default that works for me. First, download Emudeck if you don't already have that. All you have to do is go to emudeck.com, click the download button, and the emudeck.desktop file will be downloaded. You can move that to your desktop and install from there. If you already have the Emudeck installed, you can feel free to ignore this step. If this is your first time installing Emudeck, then you're going to need to provide BIOS files, not to mention your actual games. You'll have to source these on your own, but they go in the slash emulation slash BIOS folder and the slash emulation slash ROM slash switch folder respectively. I have an in-depth video with more information linked in the description below. While you're in Emudeck, feel free to check the emulator guides section to make sure Emudeck sees your BIOS files and also check the shortcuts on the right. These are going to be extremely helpful. 
Next, you want to replace the Yuzu emulator that Emudeck installed with a more recent version. Since we're using early access builds of Yuzu, I do recommend looking at their Patreon page to support them for these early access builds. But that said, you can find the latest app image build of Yuzu over at Pineapple Yuzu. I went here and downloaded the app image. From there, I found a location of Yuzu that Emudeck installed and I replaced it with my new app image. This is located in the home slash applications folder, but make sure you name the file exactly the same. Next, let's install the plugin manager, Decky Loader, and the plugin Power Tools. If you already have Power Tools, feel free to skip this step. Technically, you can do this from ME Deck by going to Tools and clicking Install Power Tools. If that doesn't work for some reason, I recommend going straight to the source, especially now that there is an easier way to install Decky Loader. Just search for Decky Loader and go to the relevant GitHub page. From there, scroll down and click Download. You'll get another .desktop file that you can move to your desktop and run. This will install Decky Loader, but you'll need to install Power Tools from within Gaming Mode. We have one more thing to do in Desktop Mode, but when you do get back to Gaming Mode, you can go to the quick access menu and you'll have a new plugin manager menu at the bottom. Go there, click the little store icon in the top right. There are a lot of awesome plugins here. Let me know if you want me to do a video on these, but for now, just look for power tools and install that. Okay, and back to desktop mode, you can download Cryo Utilities just by searching for Cryo Utilities and going to the relevant GitHub page. Here you can click on a link that will take you to the contents of the file you need. I press Control S to save this file and saved it with the name provided, install cryoutilities.desktop. You can once again move this to your desktop if you didn't save it there and then run it. A quick note here is that these utilities make changes that are somewhat non-standard and fairly low level. I highly recommend watching Kyle's video on the subject to understand what's actually happening and I'll put that link in the description, but his goal with these utilities is to both extend the life of your SSD, but also to boost performance in games. If you're really afraid of making a change like this, then go ahead and try everything else and see if that's good enough for you because there's a chance it will be. If you're willing to go through with it though, go ahead and run the .desktop when prompted. You can switch the swap file to 16 gigabytes and the swappiness to one. You will need to make sure you actually have at least 16 gigabytes free on your Steam Deck SSD for that swap file. The last step is to change the VRAM settings in your BIOS from 1GB to 4GB. This is once again a somewhat non-standard and low-level change, so if you're feeling hesitant, I recommend trying everything else. Still, just like Cryo Utilities, this is easy to do. Just shut down your Steam Deck completely, then hold the volume up button as you press power. This will bring you to the BIOS of the Steam Deck. Go to Setup Utility on the bottom right, go down one entry to the Advanced tab, and then change the UMA frame buffer size from 1G to 4G. Then press Select on the Steam Deck and hit Yes to save and exit. The Steam Deck will reboot from here. So as a recap, I recommend using ME Deck because it does all the legwork of setting up Yuzu in a way that's best for the Steam Deck. But then I recommend using an early access build of Yuzu so that you have the very latest compatibility. Power Tools is also a must so that you can disable SMT. And while you're at it, don't forget to pin the GPU to 1000 megahertz in the quick access overlay. Finally, if you want to extend the life of your SSD and squeeze every last bit out of performance, I recommend making the VRAM changes as well as the changes using Kyle's Cry Utilities. It's also important to note that those Emudeck shortcuts are extremely helpful. I found myself using Select plus R3 to double check my settings from time to time, and if a game was performing well but playing at a low resolution, I could use Start plus D-Pad Up to switch to Dock Mode and raise the internal resolution. All right, with that all set up, I wanna tell you about how these games actually played. We'll go into any special configurations we made, I'll show you some charts, and of course, we'll talk about performance compared to native. Let's start with one of my personal reasons for this video, Bayonetta 3. All right, so Bayonetta 3 was probably the game I most wanted to play on the Switch last year. I never made time for it because I was too busy on the Steam Deck, but that's why we love emulation, right? I tried to fire it up on the Steam Deck a while back, and it was a bit of a slideshow for me. That was probably because I was using an old build of Yuzu. Armed with my new toolbox, I fired Bayo 3 back up, and this time it was running extremely well. By the way, with this game, you will need to set the GPU accuracy to high to get rid of some graphical glitches. Outside of that, Bayo 3 does sometimes have dips that you don't experience on the Switch, going as low as 45 FPS in some areas, so it's not perfect the entire time. In fact, you might miss some combos or tight dodges, but overall, this was definitely playable enough for me. 
Looking at the FPS chart that Kyle put together, you can see that the average FPS was above 45, but there are 1% lows that get down to the low teens. The resolution in handheld mode is quite a bit lower than the resolution in dock mode, so when it comes to real life play, I did feel compelled to go to dock mode to get a little more clarity as far as the image quality goes. Next up is Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. This was my second most anticipated title for the Switch, but unfortunately this is not playable on the Steam Deck. We tried everything for this one. If you use Vulkan, the emulator just crashes after the opening cinematic. If you use OpenGL on Ryujinx, the game is unplayably dark and has performance issues. If you use OpenGL on Yuzu, then it either displays nothing or is too glitchy to even look at. Even with GPU accuracy set to extreme, you will randomly either get unplayably dark or unplayably bright and flashing screens either way. That's not to mention that the glitches get worse over time. Sparks of Hope is built on Ubisoft's Snowdrop engine, and in general, any game running on the Snowdrop engine has been effectively written off by the Yuzu and Ryujinx communities for some time now. The original Mario Rabbit still doesn't have support, and the emulator devs don't seem keen on prioritizing the engine since it is limited to just a few Ubisoft games. So unfortunately, this is our first unplayable game on the Steam Deck for this video. Then we come to Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which I've actually played on the Steam Deck quite a bit. By now, you probably have too. While there are frame drops, this game runs incredibly well on Yuzu for the Steam Deck, probably within 5-10% to of native Switch performance depending on the scene. The average FPS was above 30 and the 1% low stayed near 15 FPS. There's not too much more to say about this one, but I do highly recommend it as something you can play on your deck. Similar to Kirby and the Forgotten Land is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. This game runs virtually identical to native Switch performance. Kyle himself 100%ed this game on the Switch and was comfortable saying that his time on the Steam Deck was indistinguishable to the Switch version. Here's the frame rate chart, but honestly those 1% lows seem pretty close to what you'd get on the Switch natively. I played the first hour of this on the Steam Deck, it was my first time playing it, and it was a lot of fun. This is once again where I would say you might want to consider setting it to docked if you do favor image quality. All right, let's stay on this identical to Switch performance train with Pokemon Legends Arceus. Just like Xenoblade Chronicles 3, we have an RPG that feels right at home on the Steam Deck. There were rare graphical glitches, but they were so rare in fact that Kyle couldn't really replicate them enough to test potential fixes like raising the GPU accuracy. I'll show off the chart for posterity, but again, keep in mind that this performance is going to be very similar to what you'd encounter on the Nintendo handheld. This is a good game with great performance and well worth a play on a Steam Deck. But then we come to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The performance here was identical to the Switch, but if you know anything about this game, it's probably that the Switch performance is horrendous. Interestingly, this game had graphical glitches on the Switch that do actually go away if you raise the GPU accuracy from normal to high on the Steam Deck. This does come at a cost of 5% of the performance, so certainly that's something to consider. That performance, by the way, gives us an average of 25 frames per second, but with 1% lows in the single digits. Kyle and his wife Crystal said they still prefer to play this game on the Steam Deck, and I agree, but it's just very unfortunate that this game isn't better optimized. And with Splatoon 3, we have the second unplayable game. Technically, by emulation standards, it is playable, but the frame rate is so bad that I personally would not recommend it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First and foremost, this game crashes on Yuzu using Vulkan and the lighting is completely broken on OpenGL. This forced us to use Ryujinx and even then the initial loading screen hung for like 10 minutes. Apparently it was building 550 shaders during this time and to be fair this only happened during the first load. It booted normally every time thereafter. But still the frame rate would get as low as 2 thirds compared to playing natively on the Switch. This made the physics way too floaty and it felt like you were playing on the moon. It was even worse in larger environments. Overall, this is pretty much an unplayable mess at the moment, so let's move on to some good news then, shall we? Dragon Quest Treasures marks yet another RPG released to the Switch in 2022 that plays nearly identical to the Steam Deck. This game is a much more lighthearted and honestly shallower take on the traditional Dragon Quest games, but I do still find it to be charming and relaxing, so this was once again a fun one to try on the Steam Deck. Interestingly, this is the only game that made heavy use of the GPU, so do remember to unpin the GPU for this game specifically otherwise your performance will be cut in half. This is literally the only game that we tested that used the GPU this heavily, so we found that really interesting. But yeah, unpin the GPU and you should be able to get numbers just like this. Kirby's Dream Buffet was a weird one because Kyle had much better performance than I did. If you don't know, Kirby's Dream Buffet is like Nintendo's take on the Fall Guys formula, and Kyle was able to get basically identical performance to the Switch version. 
For my part, I kept getting single digit frame rates on the large tracks. I spent a few hours on this and then I remembered I really don't think this is a good game, so I decided to give up. Here's Kyle's chart. Again, these numbers are great and comparable to the Switch version. Definitely let me know in the comments if your experience is more like mine or like Kyle's. Mario Strikers Battle League is Nintendo's soccer game that was highly anticipated but mostly disappointing. Your mileage may vary with this one. I had a black screen that came on after the initial load and it just kind of hung there. Other users reported a crash whenever a match started and there is a mod out there to fix that if you're one of those people. Kyle was blessed by the emulation gods and had performance identical to the Switch outside of some initial shader stutter. He also made a note about training mode crashing but quick matches and local multiplayer were working just fine. So it is something specific to training mode. This was another game that was not high on my list to play but in all likelihood you should get results that are pretty close to the Switch if you are interested. And finally we come to Switch Sports. This is the third and final unplayable title on the Steam Deck for this video. Vulcan crashed for both Yuzu and Ryujinx. OpenGL worked on both emulators, but the font was completely unreadable, so you had to know what you were selecting. There were really strange bugs, like apparently if you press any button within the first three seconds of getting to the main menu, the game will flicker rapidly. Even once you get in the game, the map is incredibly dark, which points to shader issues. These issues persisted even with the GPU accuracy set to extreme. Even beyond all that, Kyle did a bunch of research when it comes to pairing Joy-Cons on the deck for use with Switch Sports, and it was rough. Basically, you can absolutely pair them, but they read as individual controllers for each. There is a software to remedy this called Joy-Con D, but installing this involves steps that not everyone is going to be willing to take on their Steam Deck, and playing with a single Joy-Con paired gets you into a loop that tells you a full pair is needed. Kyle said this could be fixed with some kernel work for the Joy-Con driver as well as some emulator work to fix the font and shading issues, but this is completely unplayable on the deck for the time being. And here is my late addition to this video. This is Fire Emblem Engage and I got it to work on Yuzu. It launched with Vulcan and I thought everything was fine, but it actually freezes when you get to the first bit of text and then freezes every time you start it back up after that. There's something about the shader compilation happening here that is causing it to freeze. I tried a more recent version of Yuzu and still had the same issue. Still though, I bet this will be fixed in the coming weeks. In any event, I switched to OpenGL and set the GPU accuracy to high and it worked for me. There do appear to be some minor graphical glitches, but nothing that hampered my gameplay. Again, this is a late entry, so I've only played a bit so far. Not to mention I don't have frame rate charts for this, so definitely take it all with a minor grain of salt. Still, Fire Emblem Engage seems to be getting good reviews, and I like the Fire Emblem series enough, so this is yet another RPG I'm excited to emulate on the Steam Deck. I would say this experiment has been a success. Kyle was able to come up with a default set of configurations that should work for most games, and Yuzu has made a lot of strides in the last year, and this has coincided with a year where Nintendo was somewhat prolific even if many of the individual games were disappointing, at least to me. Still though, I came out of this with a few games I'm really excited to dive into, like Bayonetta 3, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and Dragon Quest Treasures. I hope that the Switch emulator devs are able to address compatibility issues with the Snowdrop engine because I do love me some Mario Rabbids games, and based on Kyle's notes, I'm confident that Switch sports can become compatible soon if they work on it. By the way, we did do testing on Ryujinx, and for the most part, if a game didn't work on Yuzu, it didn't work much better on Ryujinx. That said, we didn't go in depth as far as which emulator later is best for what. Kyle is planning on doing a video like that on his own channel so be sure to subscribe to Cryobyte33 if you want to hear more about that and also consider joining his Patreon since he does a lot of time intensive testing to bring you really in-depth info. Thanks again to Kyle and his wife for helping me with this video. Thanks also to my wife who helped me out with a ton of the photography and shoot thanks to Jimmy from Deck Ready for help on the thumbnail. This really was a group effort and I'm excited to do more collaborations like this. Be sure to check out that dbrand switch at the link in the description. Deck gang out. Goodbye.